Hey, welcome back to another OzStars Today's Fun Project. Today we're going to talk about transmission range sensor action here. So this one here I took out of an 05 Volkswagen Passat 4 motion. It had the 2.8 liter in it. Uh, this one was bad and what I want to show you today is I'm going to take it apart and show you how or why it went bad. But I wanted to give a little bit more detail on it. Almost exactly four years ago, it's almost like an anniversary for this. Uh, I did a video on installing this. I think uh, the book time was like three hours or something crazy to put this in, but I show you how to do it pretty easily. It's uh, you got to remove a transmission or an engine mount to get to it. There's just two little bolts that hold it in and uh, two little Torx bolts, but it's a lot of work to get to those. But anyway, I'll leave a link to that video down below. I think it has about 130,000 views and I got a lot of questions on that. So some of the questions were, how do I know, you know, it's the range sensor. This thing was throwing a uh, P0706. So it had the check engine light on. You'd go to put the car, let's say it's in park. You start the car in the morning, go to put it in reverse or drive and clunk. You'd hear this clunk. The uh, Prindle would just light up, be solid block. I think it was like red and it would be in basically limp mode and that's not good so you're basically stuck in second gear anyway um, the way to test this is with the VAGCOM so by hooking it up to the VAGCOM software it's VAGCOM I'll leave a link down below or description to that um, long story in the description long story short that was showing that the shift lever which you know the park with reverse neutral drive was not coordinating with the TCM. The TCM is a is basically the brains for the transmission, transmission control module. That's located under the front passenger floorboard, okay, under the carpet. Now those are known to get wet because uh, around the air filter area, I think there's a drain right there. Uh, it clogs, water overflows, somehow gets into the cabin and floods that area and those things can get corrosion. Uh, check the connections, the connector, the wiring even, there's some splicing in the harness that runs along that rocker there. Anyway, I had checked all that and it all, it all looked visually fine and ran the VADCOM, saw that it wasn't doing its thing. So as I went through the gears, the TCM wasn't picking up on where it actually was when I physically looked to see what gear it was in. So I knew it was bad. They're about 300 bucks. Um, there might be some aftermarket ones out there, but you don't want to replace this without knowing 100% sure that it's bad. Uh, there's a little bit of labor to get to it. In that video, I showed how to do that job. So I'll, you know, I'll make sure that that links in this description if you're here uh, trying to get more information because I did get a lot of questions about it. So I wanted to open this up today. I saw a video the other day on, uh, at, on Mike Becker's Wells Vehicle Electronics YouTube over there and what he was showing was contact surfaces so there's basically you know a, a copper it looks like a copper and uh, there's a contact that rides along there well he had these great microscopic close-ups of those things and how they wear and why they go bad so it's a little more involved in that but anyway you get the idea and I took this apart thinking it might have been corrosion this is an this one happened to be the nine pin connector and first thing you do is on unhook this connector that's simple to get to make sure you don't have any corrosion in there also but you know I noticed a little bit where this um, from the transmission this pin came through and there was some corrosion I'm thinking well maybe moisture got in there so what I wanted to do is show you guys what I did to actually check to see what went wrong here there's this is held on basically with two Torx small bolts to the transmission now they're a real bear to get to so uh, I removed an engine mount. Uh, I think the, uh, yeah, both mounts had to come off. There's like a strut there. You'll see it in the video. It's a real pain. But once you get those two out uh, or get that stuff out of your way, the two bolts come out, this whole unit slides off and it's that simple. Now this black case back here is held on with two rivets. So what I did was I drilled the back of them out. So I you know, possibly you could maybe fix this thing. I don't know if I, all that labor to get to it would be worth it. I think you're better off just replacing it. But what I'll do is I'm going to bring you down to the bench here. We'll zoom in and I'll show you exactly what happened with the uh, why it failed in this case. 
and maybe it can help you out. So uh, let's get down here to the bench and take a peek. So let me start by saying this was the part I used, this intermotor, and it was NS349, and labeled it as a switch. Pretty expensive piece. I, anyhow, like I said earlier, I drilled out the two aluminum rivets on the back here. They were pretty easy to drill out. And then this thing just separated, just came apart. So I want to show you the guts right here. So on this side, let me point with this here. Over here we have the contacts. Hopefully that's in focus. But we have these contacts right here that are kind of dangling down. They have some, it looks like silicone grease on there. And these looked a little, little toasty over here and a little worn. And uh, what else can I say about it? There was a little bit of like the grease kind of got, I don't know, got grungy. Let's put it that way. So water didn't penetrate. This gasket here did good job. Water wasn't getting in here. So I don't believe there was any moisture because I don't see any corrosion. And inside here, hopefully the glare is not bad. Where those contacts ride, you can still see some of the grease here. Um, right in here, I don't think we were getting good contact and that's, that's basically what the problem was. So the TCM didn't know where it was because as you shift, you know, this thing is moving or sliding, I should say. Let's get this piece off right here. Here's the piece. Um, it's actually just going back and forth like this. Actually, it's this way, but anyhow, like this. Oop, how can you say, right? There you go. So that piece is just going back and forth like this. And as this, these contacts ride on that, that base there, they weren't making contact or there was too much crusty crud. And this has little, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's little pads on there. And a couple of these pads look kind of worn down. They don't look as healthy as the others. And uh, I believe that's what led to the failure. So basically after I replaced it, it all was good. All right, well, I hope that helped you out somewhat if you're uh, having this issue. Like I said, I, I got a lot of uh, questions on it and people want to just parts chase. They can't figure out why their car is going into um, uh, limp mode. Transmission is going into limp mode. It's a, it seems to be a common issue. But I think a majority of it is either these contacts are bad or a lot of people have reported that this connector here gets corrosion by uh, moisture gets in past here and these, these pins corrode. So that can cause your issue too. Of course, check that TCM, make sure the floor is not wet. If I ever do find the footage, I filmed of that years ago. I, I may post it. I, it can help some people out. So thanks again for uh, subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. I appreciate it if you liked the video. Don't forget to check out my other videos, and I appreciate the support. I'm about 6,700 subscribers or close to it right now, so that's great. And uh, without you guys commenting and, and giving me the support, I'd have no reason to make videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.